in today's video we're going to show you how to disassemble and reassemble the TAG XY ball screw uh, lower section. Uh, we're going to start off before we put it in a vise just show you what we're going to do. Uh, the first thing we're going to remove our uh, end plate. We're going to loosen our screws pull this back a little bit we're going to loosen these screws and pull this back a little bit. We remove the way covers and let's go ahead and put it in a vise. Or you could bolt it down. If it's bolted down that'll be just as good. We're going to go ahead and put it in a vise. We've got it in our shop fixture, our assembly fixture. Now let's go ahead and uh, remove the end plate. Now once we have the screws out We'll just go ahead and back this up and put it down. Now let's go around to the front. Okay, now we're going to loosen up and remove the screws on the Y bearing block. Just like so. There we go. We're going to loosen up and remove the screws for the X bearing block. There we go. Now we're going to remove the X table. Just like that. Now this next step is very important. As we're looking at it, on our right there is a gib retainer, an X gib retainer. We're going to loosen this up about a half a turn. Not very much, but just this one side. And then we're going to take the gib out, just like so. And the reason we're doing that is so it will expose the retaining screw for the Y uh, ball screw. This is a screw right here and you can't get to it as long as the gib is in place. Now we can remove the whole thing just like so. Okay here we have it on the bench. Now here is the retaining screw for the Y. And on the opposite side here, here is the retaining screw for the uh, X. Now we're going to remove this for the Y assembly and it'd be the same procedure for the X. Now in order to remove this you don't want to hammer around on any of this so you would put a screw back in uh, just, just barely a few threads and then we can give this a pop like so. Loosen it up. and then it would come out. Now the clearance in these ball screws, these are matched and it's really, according to the manufacturer, uh, these ball screws have less than one thousandth. Now we have noticed that uh, the clearance in all of our screws are a few tenths to maybe a half a thousandth at the max. But if you didn't have some clearance, you wouldn't be able to turn it. And in order to have no clearance at all, or no lash at all, on a ball screw, we have to have a nut on this side and a nut on this side, so we can adjust them and take all the lash out. And you could do that, but just a single uh, nut, we have nothing to go against. So a single nut usually carries with it about a half a thousandth. You can't get a whole lot closer than that because of heat, expansion and cold contraction and so forth. Now let's go ahead and put this back and show you how that's done. Now when you uh, put this back in, uh, not that you would have any reason to take it out, but uh, if you put this back in just line up the holes like so and you use a dead blow hammer, a small one, and it'll pop right in. 
We flip it over, put our screw in, and we're good to go. Now we're ready to reassemble. Now this, the X would be done the same way. All right, now we're gonna slide this on. And you may have a tight spot or it may feel tight. That's where you take your uh, dead blow hammer and just give it a little tap. There you go. And the reason is when you, when you take this off, it has a tendency to spring back together a little bit. Not much, but uh, that feels really good. And now let's go ahead and make sure we have this adjustment correct. That might be a hair loose right there. See how free and easy that spins? Let's go ahead and put our some pliers on the end here. Let's tighten it up a touch. Oh, that's better. Now you see, you can get it too tight. There it doesn't spin at all. Now that's, a bit, that's too tight. Let's loosen it up just a little. Give it a little tap to release the bearings. That's still a little too tight. Oh, there you go. It spins, but it comes to a stop. Very nice. Let's put our screws in. And what we're going to do is we'll tighten these up and we'll back them out about a quarter of a turn, each one, so this can flop around loose. Then we'll pull this back. almost to the end, maybe leave a quarter of an inch left, and then we could tighten this up. And that'll pretty much align it up nice and straight. Now let's check and see how it feels here. We have very, very little backlash, if at all. But this is the way to tell you. You hold it real tight, cock it off to one side or whatever, and, and see how much you can move this. And obviously here we could, we, you might be able to feel a few tents if you've been doing this for a long, long time, but I, this feels really, really close. Let's put our gib back in. Make sure it's nice and clean. Goes in here, in here, like so. And we could tighten up our screw Just so it touches. Just so it barely touches. We want to re-oil all of this. Let's go ahead and, and we could check this one as well. Now let's go ahead in and slide our table back on. That feels pretty good. Go all the way to the end. Uh, the same process here. We'll put in our screws. Tighten it up, back up about a half a turn. Tighten back up about a half a turn so it's loose. And then let's push it all the way down. There we go. That feels pretty good. Let's slide this all the way down. And let's put on our end plate. Once we tighten these up, you should be able to grab this and wiggle it down on the other end. And then you know it's pretty close. And you can push it, make sure it's locked in. Feels good.
We'll put the weigh covers on and we're good to go.